Hello, everybody. This is Tony Turner, and welcome to the market now as of Friday, March the 6th, at the close. Well, U.S. stocks fell again today as fears of economic damage from the spread of the coronavirus intensified, though Wall Street's major indexes ended well above their session lows. For the week, the S&P 500, along with the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the NASDAQ, posted a modest gain as stocks paired losses late in today's session. And now we will look at three charts that will give us some insight, hopefully, into the week to come. First of all, as we always do, we're going to look at a daily chart of the S&P 500 Spider, the SPY. This is the exchange-traded fund that closely follows our benchmark index, the S&P 500. Now, today at the close, uh, the, the SPY closed out the week down here at $296.12. Of course, that's about $29.61 on the S&P 500 itself. Now, since the uh, new all-time closing high, well, it was new at the time anyway, uh, on February 19th, that's when the SPY closed at its all-time closing highs of $338.34, or about $33.83 on the S&P 500 at cents. Uh, since, since then, the SPY has fallen about 15% to its lows on February 28th, to $285, and, and that was right here, this, this candle, the bottom of that, to $285.54. Now, that took us into correction territory, and correction territory means the market is 10% or more off of its all-time highs, and, and we are right now. Now, those lows have dipped, this low has dipped into prior support zones from October of last year and back into August and July of last year. So kind of we're back down there. However, since then, uh, the SPY has rallied at least uh, somewhat. It rallied up to about 313 in Wednesday of this week, uh, then fell back down. Uh, and today the SPY fell to an intraday low at $290.23. Uh, we can see that the RSI had dipped down here on February 27th and 28th into oversold territory, and that means the RSI dipped below the 30 line. That means that whatever you're looking at is oversold. You can see the volume here, and you can see how volume increased as the selling continued. Uh, since then, as I said, the market has rallied. The S&P has then fallen, or the S&P 500 spider has fallen back down. Uh, it made... Uh, and uh, today's low, it made a low at about 290 down here. And, um, and then it rallied back up again to close today at $296.12. Um, we can use today's low as support at 290 or about 2900 on the S&P 500 at cents itself. Then we can use the February 28th low if we have to for additional potential support at about 285 or 2850 on the S&P 500 itself. So we can use these price lows, especially since uh, the, there is prior support at that level from back again in October and August and July. So um, hopefully this is a uh, good steady price support here for what we have going on now. Now, overhead resistance here will, it may at least, although the market seems to not care much about it at the moment, but the overhead resistance could be up here at about $305. You see the 200-day moving average coming in there right now at $304.83. So I'll round it off to $305. We have more price resistance potentially up here at about $313. Uh, on the SPY, and we can see where that, I'm not drawing a straight line, but you see what I mean, where that price support comes in uh, back in November. So this has been a very volatile fall, as you probably know if you've been in the market. It's been a volatile rally up, and volatile is not necessarily a, a, a bad word in the market. It does mean wide price swings. That's what, what, that's what volatile means. Uh, the good news is, 
uh, the SPY again made a, a lower uh, or a, a low today at about uh, $290. And if uh, the SPY can remain above this line, what it means here is the SPY made a higher low. So if this does turn out to be the low, if price can go back up from here, if the SPY can travel back up a little bit, even penetrate that 200-day moving average and move above it, that would be, at least in the short term, what we call a tradable low or certainly good news. Higher lows are always good news because that means that, that buyers did not allow price to retest its former low back here at 285 However, they came in earlier than that, which means there is some positivity going on, some buying here, and pushed it back up. Now we have to see in the coming week if the SPY can, again, stay at least above 285. That would be good news. Uh, of course, if is the operative word here. My strategy is really to mostly to wait a little bit to see if I see some sign of clarity about the coronavirus. I'd like to see a little more orderly in the mar orderliness in the market, and I'm sure you all would as well. And of course, we'd like to see more buyers coming into the S&P 500. So please keep an eye on these support levels. They're, they're pretty important right now, so we can tell which way the market uh, stands a chance of going next. Our next chart today is a chart, as we always look at, of the Invesco QQQ ETF. As you know, the QQQ represents the NASDAQ 100, a very important index in the market. Now, uh, it is the top 100 non-financial stocks in the NASDAQ stock market, and it includes stocks like Amazon, Netflix, Apple, Facebook, uh, Google, that whole group. Now, today, the, F, the uh, QQQ, it's still above its 200-day moving average, so that's good news. And it closed today at $208.02. Uh, now, it did close at a new all-time high on Wednesday um, back in February uh, tw 28th. The QQQ did make a new all-time closing high of $236.98 back in mid-February. Then, of course, it too fell dramatically on the coronavirus news, virus news uh, today down to one uh, about 199 one and just below uh, 199 now it was down on the 28th down to uh, about 16 percent down from its all-time highs it rallied back up again to about two 218 so that will uh, probably indicate here a pretty decent resistance area for price should it start back up and try to hit that again? As you can see, it has prior uh, it has prior resistance from the lows down here in January. So the the QQQ down, back up, back down again, and again closing today at two hundred and eight dollars and two cents. However, it did bounce off of its two hundred day moving average here uh, at about two hundred one ninety nine two hundred, and that's a good sign. That's a good sign, right at the two hundred day moving average. So we will have to see. Uh, it did come up here at Wednesday of this week to $218, as I mentioned before. So we could end up trading in a range here for a little while. Volume is very strong. We know the RSI dipped down to 30, but didn't go below it and is now back up to 39. Uh, that's a, a slight negative. Um, so again, we have nearby support here at about 200 then a little bit more at 203 if we don't go below today's lows and if the QQQ starts rising again. Now, do be careful here before jumping into any high momentum stocks. And if you do, maybe consider just nibbling initially with very small share size. And once you're in, you will probably want to consider entering hard stops with your broker. That's the only way I want to do it. I don't want to start rationalizing if the market dips lower again. Our final chart today is a chart of the Consumer Staples Select Sector Spider ETF, the XLP. I did go through many, many, many indexes and exchange-traded funds today. 
Uh, there is not much orderliness <laughs> in, um, in any that I came across, but we do know that consumer staples represent things we have to have should things get any more uh, confusing. Uh, the, the XLP is weighted to beverages and household products. Uh, the top components are Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, Walmart, Costco, stocks like that. That have um, that sell the products we need and have to have. Um, the XLP closed today at sixty one dollars and fifty four cents. Uh, it is back just above its two hundred day moving average. It did make an all time closing high, a new all time closing high at sixty four dollars and seventy nine cents on February fourteenth. Then by February twenty eighth. It had dipped down here to about $56 at the lows and then rallied back again to close on this day at uh, $57.99. Now today it has rallied. It rallied back up to about $63.50 on Wednesday, pulled back. But every day notice that it's closed, at least every day certainly, but this fall down. Every day it's closed higher than it opened except for this day right here. Uh, February 29th or Tuesday of this week. So um, since this is the case, since these this companies represent what we have to have, uh, I've looked at a lot of charts today. This is one of the most positive ones. Um, and again, it closed at 61.54. So if, and here's the if, uh, the XLP is trading above its, its 200-day moving average, the black line, uh, and that 200-day moving average comes in at $60.97. So if the XLP can stay above this $61 about zone right here in the coming week, I may add a very, very, very small share size to my portfolio. Uh, now, I'm going to make this a loose stop because this price, uh, the, the, the share size I add will be so small, and I want to give it some room for volatility. So I'm going to place my initial stop down here at 55.50. That's initially. Uh, and then I will raise it to a trailing stop a little higher and keep moving it up if the XLP uh, continues to stay above the 200-day moving average, especially above $60. I'm not going to give it any more room than $60. So I'll place my initial stop at 55.50 and then can start raising it assuming the, S and the, S the XLP excuse me, can remain fairly positive. Please know that I may choose to exit the position at any time if the market gets more ornery. So let's go on to the coming week's economic reports. But first, because the market has caused so many good stocks to fall dramatically, we are offering our popular online training, How to Bottom Fish Like a Pro, at a 20% discount, and it is available right now. Learn how to buy low and sell high, and especially right now, learn how to buy low in the proper manner. You can discover my simple and effective approach to the market that gives you the tools to profit in the coming weeks and in the coming months, and it can make your trades more profitable from now on. Just go ahead and check out the link on this screen or simply check on the button below. And now for the upcoming week's economic reports, nothing much on Monday and Tuesday. On Wednesday, we have the CPI or Consumer Price Index and crude oil inventories. Thursday, we have jobless claims, the PPI, which is, which is the Producer Price Index and natural gas inventories. Friday, we have the University of Michigan's Consumer Sentiment. Again, this is the perfect time to profit from the market sell-off. You can learn how to bottom fish like a pro easily and successfully and get this already low price training at a 20% discount. To check it out, just click on the button below. Until next time, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,